Hey, what's up everybody? This is Eric, the Barrier Collector, and today um, I'm going to be reviewing something that for the last week, I just got it last, last weekend, and for the last week I've been really fiddling with, I've been trying to figure it out, but it's something that I really wanted to get after I kind of did a little bit of research, and that is the PlayStation Classic the PlayStation Mini for short or PlayStation Classic um, as you guys know this little mini console was released um, in December of 2018 it just came out um, just recently and um, you know for the last couple of months before you know when it was um, it was announced back in September um, that this console was gonna be out um, a lot of people weren't really um, all for it when I first heard about it um, I was kinda like oh god you know I don't think it's gonna be that great but you know now that I got I, I ended up doing some research um, not long ago and last week I was looking at something that really caught my attention about the console and I decided to go for it and get it and so far um, I'm really I'm I'm enjoying it. I like it, you know. I've really been into it, you know. Um, so basically, yeah. First, um, before I mention the reason why I got it, um, I will go go ahead and just give a quick review of the console, of the specs, you know, what it comes with and everything. So you get this bad boy. It comes in with the system itself is really tiny very very small very small it's just a replica of the original PlayStation original fat PlayStation the original one um, I actually own the original um, PlayStation the console as well as the as the slim PlayStation console um, so I own both of them and when I looked at the design it's, it was pretty cool you know they made it look like the PlayStation 1 um, it came with two controllers so it came with with two USB controllers um, um, the thing I didn't like about the console is that the controllers that it came with um, it's actually the original controllers that when you first um, when the Sony PlayStation came out you um, you had these style of controllers then later down the line when games such as like Ape Escape came out which needed the um, the um, the control sticks you know they they made the controller differently and a lot of games ran on the control sticks but from what I remember you didn't not a lot of games I mean there were used for the control sticks on the on the controllers but uh, the majority of games ran pretty well with this style controller now mind you the system came with this originally so came with that and then it also came with the a um, power supply but it doesn't come with an AC adapter which is messed up it even tells you on the box right there it'll say USB AC adapter not included but the cool thing about it is that you can just grab any regular old AC adapter from your phone charger or whatever and you can plug that in into the power source and it'll work fine um, the other thing it came out I don't have it with me because it's still inside the box is the HDMI port so it came with that. It also came with an HDMI cable. Why did they pack with an HDMI cable with these but did not pack the little square for the AC adapter? I do not know. It's kind of lame that they didn't do that. But anyways, they did it, but it's not a big deal. Now, reviewing the console itself, it's very, very lightweight. I feel like if I drop it, it's just going to break. Um you know it has buttons right here so you see right here this is the power button that turns the 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 console on and off thing I don't like about it is that it's kinda like when you turn it on you hear it it's kinda springy it, it's kinda like uh, sometimes I have to like really hit the button to turn it on and then it has the reset button right there which resets the the game on the game menu when it um when you're when you're playing the games and you wanna you you're tired of playing the game that you have um, played on, you just hit the reset button. And it'll send you back to the game selection screen. And this other button that says open. Now, what this button is used for? It's used for um, 
it's used to um, toggle between games that have, for example, this, this system comes with Final Fantasy VII. And as we all know, for those um, veteran players out there, Final Fantasy VII came as a four disc um, game. So what this button does is when it tells you to exchange discs, you press this button and it exchanges the discs. That, that's what that's for. And obviously the controller ports, they're USB ports for controller one and controller two. Um, and then you have the um, HDMI cable and the power cable. Then I don't know if you guys remember that this is where we would plug in a Pro Action Replay um, device back in the days. Um, I actually thought there was a hidden USB port in here. But when I did more research, it ended up just being for show. So there's nothing there. And yeah. Um, now... On to the games. <laughs> this is where this system had the biggest gripe, where a lot of people had the biggest gripe about it, and it's the games. It comes built in with 20 games. Um, now, the, the there's differences between the US and PAL version compared to the Japanese um, version of it. And um, the difference between that is that there's a couple of games that, that came out with the system that the... That, uh, um, Japanese people didn't get so for example um, games common to the entire regions to all regions are Battle Arena Toshiden, Final Fantasy 7, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, Mr. Driller, R4 Rich Racer Type 4, Resident Evil Director's Cut, Revelations Persona or Persona, um, Super Puzzle Fi Fighter 2 Turbo, Tekken 3 and Wild Arms. Those are the ones that are that are in all of the systems, no matter what version you get. But here's where it's the difference. It's uh, for the North American, um, PAL, Korean, Southeast Asia exclusive. Um, like us in North America, we got Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Grand Theft Auto, Odd Worlds, Abe's Odyssey, Rayman, Siphon Filter, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, and Twisted Metal. Now, the Japanese version of the console exclusives that it came with, and this is where I, I get a little bit kind of like pissed off about because I wish those games were in there instead of the exclusives are were Ark the Lad, Ark the Lad 2, Armor Core, G Darius, um, Greatest Gaiden or Greatest Gaiden, Parasite Eve, Saga Frontier, and, um, and Psy. Um, I guess that's an, a Japanese. I forgot what game that is. Sai. Um, it's a it's a game. Um, I believe it is the Japanese version of Devil Dice. So in a way, I wish we would have gotten those games instead of the exclusives we got. But you know, the biggest gripe that a lot of people have is that there's no Crash Bandicoot, there's no Parappa the Rapper. There's no games that identify the Sony PlayStation back in the days. And that's where a lot of people are upset about. And you know, even though I'm not a big fan of Crash Bandicoot, um, I like the games, don't get me wrong. That was my first game, Crash Bandicoot, um, when, I, when I bought the PlayStation. I wish it would have been on there though, you know? It's like it's like um, it's like a Genesis console not having Sonic or a Nintendo console not having Mario. You're not gonna include your mascot, your your one of your biggest mascots. Another one that could have been great would have been um, oh my god, my god, the name of the the one with the dragon. Um, whoo, um, that game. Um, Spyro. Spyro would have been great on here as well because those are games that identified the system back in the days. Just a, a, a just a very few that identified it, identified the system when it first came out. Um, but um, the reason why I got this console is because I just discovered something about the console that you can do, um, and that is you can mod it. <laughs> you can actually mod it to play um, all the games you want on the PS One. And not only that, you can also play RetroArch. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that because the process is not that hard, but it's out there. You guys can research it. Um, I'm running AutoBleam off my USB um, stick. Yeah, it's my Ghostbuster car, but it's a USB stick. Um, yeah, you can, you can preload this um, 
to, to play a bunch of games and to play auto bleam which what it does it doesn't um, it doesn't um, mod your system it, it's just through the memory stick and um, if you don't want to use the games on the memory stick you can just take it off and you can play the system as is as how it came out so it doesn't ruin any warranties or anything and it's and so far um, this whole week that I've been playing with the system it's it's worked great the only advice I have is to use a fat 32 um, fat 32 um, formatted um, USB stick um, and also I, I this one's a 16 gig the one I have here trust me you're gonna want to get a higher um, a higher um, giga, gigabyte stick um, it's recommended to get a 64 gig or higher um, however I bought a 64 gig um, stick when I bought this console but unfortunately um, the the memory stick it turned out to be a exe um, formatted fat um, stick and I couldn't I couldn't format it to 32 fat so yes that's the only thing um, although auto bleam they're they're working on on um, they're working on uh, make it more compatible and everything the other thing is because you're plugging in the USB stick right here you won't have the use of two controllers you can only use one however um, you can use USB hubs but not all of them will work mine worked but it did something really weird like when I was playing the actual game um, it, it kind of instead of the one that's identified as controller one when you're doing the menus it actually controller two was controller one and vice versa so but it worked fine it worked flawlessly there was nothing wrong with the controls um, the next step that I'm gonna try that I haven't tried yet is that um, when I have my computer and I used to play games on my PC um, when I play the emulators a long time ago I bought a USB um, hub that allowed me to plug in PS2 controllers to play on the emulator so I haven't tried that hub and see if that worked because if it works and everything is good then it'll be great because instead of using these controllers I can use the PS2 controllers that have the sticks so um, I haven't tried it yet but um, if I do try it I'll make sure that I'll update my post below in the comments and let you let you guys know or if anybody knows out there please leave the comments below but this is why I got the system because not only will you be able to play um, PS1 eBoots, um, BinQ files, or or um, or image files or anything like that, you can also um, add RetroArch in there and play the old classic emulators like the Super Nintendo, Nintendo Genesis. I even heard that you can even play Nintendo 64 and play um, Dreamcast, PSP games, and so forth. However, since it's just fairly new that it came out, it's still in the works, but they're making it, so far they're making it um, possible. I tried running um, um, uh, RetroArch into the PSP Classic, but I really didn't get really deep into it to figure out to see if... Um, if if it's gonna work so that's something that's still in the works for for me that I still need to um work out but anyways as far as playing um PS1 games man it, it it's awesome it's like um I don't know if it'll eliminate the need to ha to buy a actual PS1 I mean I prefer to have the hard disks and everything so um but um it could it could possibly be to the point where it may take over a PS1 console and have everything you want in this little tiny one going back from the PSP, PS1 going back and um, if that happens then yes it was worth getting it I actually paid um, $50 I know that it dropped in price this week I, I checked a few days after and unfortunately it was like damn you know it dropped in price but you know, if I were you guys, um, keep an eye out on this. But anyways, I'll give my opinions about what I think um, after I show you really quick um, the the games and everything. So I'll be back in a minute. Hey everybody, so now I'm back. I'm about to turn on the system. So...
So the system kind of powers up like the original PlayStation 1. Um, same similar intro screen. And here are the list of the games. So last time I was playing, I was playing Jumping Flash. Um, that was one of the games I first had when I was um, when I was younger, when I had the PS1. And you know, I kind of liked it. Um, it brought me back memories. And so here are the list of games: Metal Gear Solid, Odd World, Rayman, Resident Evil. So yeah, I mean, the list of games are okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play. I'll start with Jumping Flash because I was already playing this game. So just to give you a little quick demonstration of how the system works. So you, it'll tell you right there, um, X to enter. A triangle will give you the, the console button guide. You know, it tells you what the, the console does. Um, and then if you select the game, or you press down on the controller, it gives you, you know, for the settings, you know, the video game, the guides. Um, memory card where you have the game saves and actually um, what this system does it kind of runs on an emulator so that's what the system is is basically a PS1 emulator and it, it gives you a resume point on it um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play and just start off where I left off just to give you a quick gameplay um, of the system and then I'll try it with um, with the with the mod on the on the um, memory stick so for now I'm just showing you this. And that's another thing right now that says Sony Entertainment Europe. A lot of these games, some of them are PAL versions, which is another thing that people didn't like. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Well, let's start a new game. So the graphics, as you can see, some of the graphics are going to be a little bit um, out there, a little bit um, outdated. But nonetheless, you know, not a bad game. This one I kind of like. I had fun playing it the other day. So basically what you have to do in this game is collect all the carrots in the level. See? Three left. They're called jet pots, but they're just carrots to me. And then once you're done, you go to the um, goal, which is right there. And then I guess if you wanna, um. If you want to go ahead and reset the game, just hit reset on the control on the on the console and it'll take you back to the screen. And then it's telling me if I want to override. I'm gonna say no, I don't because I actually passed the level. <laughs> so no. But anyways, that was just a quick um kind of like a quick show of how the console looks um without using auto bleam or anything, just the, the bare bones of how the console looks. Um, anyways, I'll be back in one second, and I'll go ahead and install um, install the the USB stick and try it with the mod. So I'll be back in a second. Hey, what's up, everybody? So I'm back again. So actually, I had to go back and modify um, a different USB um, flash drive because the one, the Ghostbuster one that I used, since it was only a 16 gig, I felt like it wasn't. Like it would power up really slow and, and would not play the games as fast as it should. So I finally was able to figure out how to format my other flash drive card into the into the main into to make it work into a FAT32 um you know drive. But anyways, um with it with that being said, I was able to add a ton more games. I was able to make um all the games they, they were speeding up and working. 
not only that I was able to figure out RetroArch so I actually was able to um, play um, SNES games on RetroArch I didn't try other emulators but I tried the N the sorry not SNES the NES one and um, I was able to make it work and it worked um, great but anyways I'm about to show you um, Auto Bleem for the PlayStation Classic and as you can see right here in the menu you have uh, several options um, you press the start button and you start Auto Bleem um, you press X and you rescan your memory card that is if you're doing any updates on the games um, if you press the circle button it brings you back to the original games that are that are built into the system and with that um, with going back into doing that what it allows you to do it allows you to do um, auto saves like like um, save states and and loads as well as cheats for those games um, you press the square button and you launch retroarch um, triangle it just tells you information about you select this options and L1 is advanced options so anyways I'm just gonna go ahead and press start and as you can see um, it's gonna load it up pretty quick see um, the last when I was working on the other one it, it took forever to get that screen and look at all the games that I added so I added a bunch of games um, now uh, and I remember saying earlier that I wanted to see if Ape Escape was gonna work um, adding a USB hub um, let me let me show you guys um, I was trying to test out to see if the if this USB hub was gonna work um, because this allows me to plug um, PlayStation 2 controllers into the computer um, so I tested this out and unfortunately it didn't work so I was trying to get a, a controller with DualShock analog sticks and unfortunately it didn't work the game loaded but it told me you can't play the game because you need um, the sticks so um, yeah so I downloaded a bunch of games for it so I have a bunch of, of games for the system right now so um, with that um, with that I'm gonna go ahead and select a game I'm gonna play let's play Metal Slug X I like this game so let's go ahead and, and test it out and as you do you press X to enter and it'll select the, um, the game Did it work? Huh. Okay. Oh, I know why. Okay, so another thing I discovered, the reason why this game didn't load probably is because I was dumping games that were the eBoot PVP with the key file and the bin file. When the games are like that, I noticed that it won't boot the game. However, if you do a, a queue and a a, a bin in a Q file game or a pure eboot game that ju you just did the eboot it'll load so I'm willing to bet that's that was one of the issues I was having with games so with with that I'm gonna test a different game let's see let's test style monkey magic there we go and see it loaded up so yeah one of those things you wanna do it won't load a file that's a that has an eboot pvp a key file and a bin file together So this is another favorite game of mine, um, Monkey Magic, and I believe it was a cartoon that came out um, uh, a while back. I want to say there was a cartoon called Monkey Magic. And this game is basically an action platformer. So I'm just going to go ahead and start it up. So I'm just going to skip through the intro and just kind of test out the gameplay for this game. So... a 2D platformer. And you know, kind of scanning the level to give you an idea what you need to collect and everything. Mm -hmm. Boy, does he have mm -hmm. big plans 
stick with me, and I'll help you gain divine power. So yeah. here it is. And that's one thing I like about this. Whenever you get an extra life, it goes monkey. Yeah. <laughs> so it sinks. Now we're gonna go ahead. If we press, if we press, select, and triangle, you'll enter the the menu. Now you can scan here. You can do loads and saves. And this is where you go to extra stuff. You load your cheats, and you can load cheats for the game. So I'm going into the folder cheats and looking for monkey magic. see monkey mag monkey hero monkey magic here we go I loaded cheats and then you go into cheats and this is where you turn them off and on so we could put infinite health infinite lives well, let's see if that works so let's test them out hey that's a checkpoint they light up when you pass by and then if you mess up this is where you return. Oh, yeah. see? Let me see the infinite lives. So I have four. Let me see if it's going to work. Because sometimes there's other codes. And let's see. See, I have infinite lives. So the infinite lives code worked. Um, let me see if there's anything right here that has... I'm just trying to test the, um... Triangle unlocks it. Watch out for the bees! If they get mad, ooh, we get better run! So I guess the infinite, the infinite health is not working. So what we can do, we can always check another code. Um, infinite health. Um, I guess it doesn't have anything, just infinite lives, which is all right. Infinite lives, if you have the whole thing, it could just get you there. Let me see. Well, anyways, um, this has been a quick test for the for Auto Bleed. Um, if you press select and triangle and you hit exit, it takes you back to the game selection screen, and that's how, and it and it actually makes a save point where to resume. So that's pretty cool, you know, having all these games. Now, um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and test out, um, I'm going to test out RetroArch right now. So I just have to turn off the system and turn it back on again. Give me one second. And it should boot up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit um, square to launch RetroArch. And um, the way RetroArch works is a little bit lift, um, different. Um, cores are what you call the, um, the emulators. So if you go load core, you select the emulator you want to select. So I'm going to select, um, I don't know it by name, but I can recognize it. It is Nestopia. There you go. So select that and then load content. This um, selects, if you get hit start directory, this is where you look for your ROMs. So, um, let me see. Um, low content. Sorry, it's a little bit. Um, I think it's the media. It's media, because media is your, your, um, your USB stick. So then you go to um, RetroArch. This is where I have them. And you see NES ROMs. So I'm just going to go ahead and select, um, let me select, um, let me see, 
I know I have a bunch of games for it. So I'm just going to select. Let me see. Well, let's go ahead. Select Bad Dudes. Um, and it'll launch it to Nestopia. And there you have it. You now I'm playing the game um, on, the, on the emulator. Um, the other thing you can do with this is um, once you, you do that, uh, let's select Blade, I guess. So um, basically, um, if you want to get back to the menu and select cheats or whatnot, um, I'll show you guys how to do it in a minute once this, this is um, done. Um, so I can show you how the game runs and then I'll show you what to do to go into the menu. So basic, so there you are. It runs pretty good. Um, you got turbo buttons, which are the, the, um, the triangle, triangle and square are the turbo buttons. And then X and circle are the B and A buttons, or A and B, or whatever the controller for the Nintendo. Now you press um, select and start at the same time. You you um, you go to the menu screen, which is where you can load, save, save state, load state, and then you got options where it says cheats. Now the way this works is either you can look up your own codes through the system or you can bring in um, cheat files and upload them similar to what I did with AutoBleam. But anyways, um, this is pretty much the um, auto, um, pretty much the, the AutoBleam slash RetroArch, you know, a quick view of how it works, runs on the PS Classic. And it's absolutely great. I haven't run any other SNES games, Genesis, Sega Master System games yet. But, you know, if you have the potential to do all this, it's it's really cool. But anyways, um, I'll see you guys in a minute. Hey, what's up, everybody? So now I'm back. Um, so my final thoughts on the system. Um, I picked this system up. I paid only half off um, from the release date that it came out a few months ago. I just paid like 50 bucks for it. So in my opinion, do I recommend the system? I say yes. Pick one up. Um, the system in itself is just meh kind of bland because the games are okay you got a you got a couple of decent games but you know a couple of games that you know they could have put other games like Crash Bandicoot and and Parappa the Rapper and other games that that um, identified the system for what it was um, but uh, once you do the auto bleam thing on the on the um, USB stick and you modded using that it just opens up a whole new world of possibilities not only can you play PS1 games or, or PSP games on it, but you can play, um, you know, Super Nintendo, Nintendo Genesis, Sega Master, Atari using using the ret the RetroArch um, emulator. So, um, not emulator, but the RetroArch program. Um, so, if you guys see one, um, pick it up. I know that when I went to Target, because I got mine at Target, I got it on discount because I price matched it. Um, when I went into the counter, the girl who, who scanned it, she's like, wow, I don't see a lot of people buying this console. And then I told her, well, you know, I just discovered that I could mod it and play a bunch of games on it. And she looked at me wide open, like, really? And I said, yes, you know. So I told her, um, I know it's something really new that's out there that just came out. So if you're able to do that, then it's really worth it, especially for the price. Because my prediction about this console is, once a lot of people find out what you can do with it, um, it's going to be a highly sought after console. That's my opinion. I know some people probably say, nah, Bay Area Collector, you're, you're, you're BSing it, you know. But no, um, it, I feel like it's going to be a sought after console. So anyways, if you see this console um, in the stores and you see it for a decent price, definitely pick it up. So anyways, this has been Eric, the Bay Area Collector. Peace out.